Hello, my name is Jan Ketil Röth and I will in this video talk about local map algebra function. The content of the video, most of it, is taken from the textbook GIS Tools to Understand the World. Now, algebra is, as you may know, a branch of mathematics and the term was introduced in a similar concept by Dana Tomlin more than 20 years ago when she used the term cartographic modeling in this book GIS and cartographic modeling. There are other notions circulating including map calculator, raster calculator, map function but they are generally referring to the same kind of operation. If you are using ArcGIS Pro, Map Algebra can be accessed through the tool called Raster Calculator, but there are many other tools, for instance, most of the tools you find under the Math folder in the Spatial Analyze tools are actually Map Algebra functions. You may have used this already, for instance, if you have interpolated a population raster, you may have population raster from each five year so you may have it from 1995 2000 and 2005 so what if you would need a population raster representing the population numbers as they were in 2004 then if you assume there is a linear trend in the population increases then this could be expressed mathematically using a map algebra expression so the population in 2004 is a weighted combination of the population in 2000 and the population in 2005 and since 2004 is closer to 2004 we typically then weight the population number in 2005 higher than the population number in 2000 and then in the map uh, algebra expression you can just insert that in the raster calculator where you have the two input rasters and you f make a formula expressing that the output raster here population for 2004 should be expressed as the formula uh, indicated here now you may find that other places also in ArcGIS Pro there are something called raster function uh, where you can take out uh, the plus function for instance which is also then accessible through the toolbox from the math folder there is the plus function now back to Dana Tomlin uh, she organizes this map algebra functions in four groups or families local focal zonal or global related to the scope of the analysis and this video is then about the local function local function is typically what we think of as map algebra and this work on single cells and where one cell at a time are going to be processed and the assign new value is depending on this cell positions only there are some requirements for map algebra function, local map algebra function. You should have the same coordinate system. You should have same pixel size and having rasters being aligned is always a good idea. So I normally rec uh, recommend you to use the snapping raster to set this up in the environment settings if you are using the S3 software whenever you create new raster. So let's go to some examples of local map algebra function. Often you combine two rasters, but you can also combine one raster with a constant. And this is what you typically want to do if you have a digital elevation model where the values are in foot and you need to convert them to meters. Then there is a constant. You can multiply each of the input pixels values in the input raster. And this work then at a cell by cell function. 
So you multiply this value with a fun with a, a constant and you get this value which is then in meter. You continue to the next cell, you take this value, multiply it with a factor and you get this value. So each cell at the time. So this can be also be done using two input thrusters and the same principle you compare the values in the same pixel position for the two input thrusters. So here from input thruster 1 you take the value in this cell position and add it to this pixel value in this pixel position and it is written to the same pixel position here. So 1 plus 2 equals 3 and it continues with all the pixel position in the input thruster. So 4 plus 7 equals 11, etc. So this was the addition. And of course we can have multiplication and many other uh, mathematical expression used as local function. The same principle, you take 4, multiply it with 2, and the output uh, value is written to the same pixel position here, 8. Maybe a, a, a issue of concern is that often you have no data or missing values. So for instance here we have two input thrusters, but here in the lower left corner we have a cell with no data. Sometimes students confuse a zero with a no data, but a zero is a pixel value, a valid pixel value. And everything you multiply with zero is, of course, zero. So here, when we have zero in the input thruster, we will get a value in the output thruster, but a value which is zero. When you have no data in the input thruster, you will have no data as the output value. Now, if you remember how thrusters are represented, uh, you know that Rasters are never circular, they are always rectangular. So, but you may have, you only having values for a non-rectangular form, but then you will have lots of no data in all these areas, which is not covered in your study area. So quite often you may have no data in your rasters. Now other local map algebra functions, one of a uh, very common map algebra function is reclassifying. One example of an application of that is shown here. Uh, this is the province Aceh in Indonesia and it's showing then a land use categories uh, like um, closed forest, open fragmented forest, other forest and other land use water and not classified, shown here with a Norwegian names. And upon this we have uh, extensions of an armed conflict going on. So this was, where, was an area which were affected by armed conflict. And in a study some years back we were investigating whether closed forests were favorable for rebel groups which did a rebellion against the governmental rule because they could hide away and more easily do their fighting. So then we want to separate all those areas which were closed forest. So we were only interested whether or not it was a closed forest or other categories. So then we take the input raster being the land use categories. We need to have some rules on how the values from the input raster should be reclassified to be written in the output raster. And this is typically done by using a two column uh, table uh, with all values in one column and the new values in the second column. And then everything which is one, which is the closed forest, we wanted to keep, but the rest of the land use categories, we then assign these a common value and we used the value zero. So here we got the result raster. Only those pixels which are closed forest are coded one and the rest 
whatever land use categories they belong to are coded as zeros. But also here, no data belongs to no data. But actually here you can now actually then recode no data to something else. But you should, of course, then have some idea of what this value should be. And here we have the output data and then it was very easy for us to, for instance, then just summarize all the pixels having values one within this area. And since we know the cell size of each pixels, we also easily could know the area share of this polygon here, which were closed polygon. And we could investigate whether globally, where there were um, armed conflict polygons with a high amount of um, closed forest if they were more prone to prolonged conflict. Look up these articles if you want to read more about it. Now this was an example of reclassifying integer raster or discrete raster. Uh, it, reclassifying float raster is a bit more difficult. Unfortunately there are no way at least to my knowledge, how you could just change the value of individual pixels using commercial ArcGIS or other GIS software. So what should you do then if you have a digital elevation model and you know that there is only one value you can have for each pixel position. So normally then for a terrain, you would have the pixel position here representing the road or the path here. Uh, but what if you want to model the flow of water and the flow of water went through a culvert which is a little bit below the road surface. We don't have typically this lower set value in the digital elevation model. So this may not then be needed to modify the digital elevation so it represents the lower height where the culvert leads the water. So. This can be done if you are able to represent the culvert and if you know the height values for the bottom of the culvert. So this is an example here where we have represented each of the cells which covers the line of the culvert and we have the height values here. And here we have no data values because this is not where we have any culverts. And then we can use a function called is null, which create then uh, uh, what is called a, a dummy kind of raster with values zero and ones, where all those pixel position where we have no data, they are coded one, and all those pixel position where we had values are coded as zeros. And this result could be then used in a conditional statement where we investigate then each cell position and assign values whether the position is where we have a culvert or where we do not have a culvert. So we set up a condition and this is if you are known to programming uh, similar to an if then else condition. So you set a condition for instance is cell value equal zero so then we know if we have the cell value zero this is where we have the culvert and then we should get the values the height values for the culvert grid we created so then in the modified digital elevation model the output here these pixels here will be taken from the culvert but if the cell values is not equal zero that means that there are no culvert there so the set value should be taken from from the digital elevation model we already have. So then for all these other pixel value, we keep the values from the digital elevation model. Thank you for listening. This was all of local map algebra functions.